I'm Zach Heisey. Welcome to the Dana Garage. Today we're going to talk you through the installation of our Ultimate Dana 60 axles in Jeep's new Wrangler JL. We've taken all the upgraded features that we included in our JK version and built them into the JL version. Let's start with the center section. We have a high pinion, high clearance Dana 60 housing that has our Dana 60 10 inch 256 millimeter ring gear available in a variety of ratios. The Ultimate Dana 60 includes our heavy duty diff cover and behind it, either Eaton's electric locking differential or an ARB air locker. It has heavy duty brackets in all the JL locations. It has a raised track bar mount, a raised steering stabilizer mount, raised drag link and tie rod mounts, 35 spline chrome alley axle shafts, inner and outer, massive SPL 70 U-joints, 14 inch disc brakes with dual piston calipers, eight on six and a half bolt pattern, and premium worn locking hooks. So we've already removed the stock front axle in our JL. We've unplugged the front axle disconnect and the ABS sensors. I've already taken the stock brake hose and put it on our new caliber with the original bolt. And I've got everything tied up out of the way so that we can install our Ultimate Dana 60 front axle. First thing I like to do is hook up the upper control arm brackets. One of the great features about the Ultima Dana 60 JL is the plug and play ABS sensors. On the JL version, we reuse your stock sensors, so you have to remove the rotor and caliper in order to install them. You remove the sensor from your stock hub unit, and then you'll fish it behind the splash shield, install it into the bracket with the OE bolt, and tuck the wire safely out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is install the calipers. I'm going to tighten these now, we'll go back and torque them later. You want to route the ABS line away from any pinch points. The next step is to install the lower control arms. If you reuse your stock brake lines, this stock bracket will fit on the Altum Dana 60 if you modify it a little in the middle by putting just a slight bend in it to make it a little narrower. Next, we're gonna install the brake line bracket. Now we're going to install the brake bracket on the passenger side. Like I said before, I've modified it in the middle to make it a little narrower so that it fits in. Included in our lift kit were these two inch joust restrictors. You have to drill a hole in the spring perch to put the bolt through and the nut comes up from the bottom. Now we're gonna connect our track bar. We're reusing the stock JL track bar and we're installing it in the upper position of our raised track bar mount on the Ultimate Dana 60 front axle. Now it's time to install our coil springs. Make sure you rotate the spring around so that it seats on the spring perch. We're gonna install our sway bar end link we're going to reuse the original flag nut and bolt. We'll put the flag nut down from the top. Now we install the sway bar end link on this side. We're not going to tighten any of our suspension components until we get the weight of the vehicle on the suspension. Now we can install our shocks.
For the Ultimate Dana 60 JL, you can't reuse your stock tie rod. What we designed it for is any aftermarket JK tie rod. Anytime you make major modifications to the suspension, the axles, or the steering, you need to have your Jeep aligned at a professional shop. Just like the tie rod, you can't reuse your JL drag link for the Altima Dana 60. Just call up your favorite steering manufacturer and they will have an Altima Dana 60 JL drag link. We'll attach it to our raised steering arm. and then to the pitman arm. Make sure you torque all the steering components to the manufacturer's specs and then check them after 100 and 500 miles. Now we can reinstall the vent hose. If you have a Rubicon, the locker plug has four pins in it. The Dana one only has two. For optimal performance, we recommend getting Dana's electric locker switch kit. Dana has built Spicer Double Carden Long Slip 1350 Series drive shafts that are direct bolt-in for your JL. Whether you have Ultimate Dana 60s like we're installing today or you still have your stock axles. Today, we're gonna to install the rear axle on our Ultimate Dana 60 JL. The Ultimate Dana 60 JL rear axle has a 248 millimeter Dana 60 ring gear, comes in your choice of Eaton Electric or ARB air locking rear differential. It has thicker tubes and brackets, has a raised track bar mounting point. We've already installed our two inch jounce restrictors. Has a 14 inch disc brake with dual piston calipers. A full floating wheel end, which means the axle shaft only has to transmit torque and not take the weight of the vehicle. And a 35 spline from Molly axle shaft. One of the things we've already installed in our new JL vehicle is these aftermarket emergency brake cables that we got from Dorman. Your stock JL cables won't work. Another thing that'll save you a little headache, if you take the upper rubber isolators for the leaf springs, put a little RTV on them and stick them in there, it'll save you a lot of hassle. First thing I like to do is install the upper control arms. We'll do that with the factory bolt and flag nut. Now we can hook up the upper control arm on the other side. Next, we're going to install the lower control arms using the factory hardware. Now we'll do the other lower control arm. Now we're going to lower the axle back down so we can install the coil springs. Now we're going to install the coil springs. The rubber bushing that we put in earlier has a notch to align the upper coil. So make sure when you raise it up that it goes in there. And we'll put in the second coil spring. Now we're gonna raise the axle up so we can install the shocks. Then we'll do the other side. Now we're going to install the track bar on the raised track bar bracket and use the original flag nut. We're not going to tighten any of the suspension components until we get the weight of the vehicle on the ground. Just like we did on the front, we need to reuse 
your stock wheel speed sensors or ABS sensors. So you need to unbolt them from your original axle and install them onto the Ultimate Dana 60 with the stock bolt. Now we're gonna do the other side. Next, we're gonna install the emergency brake cables that we talked about before. But do yourself a favor and take off the caliper and the rotor to make it easier to install. Make sure that it seats, just like that. Now we're gonna install the brakes on the driver's side. Make sure the rotor's seated all the way. Make sure the caliper's not twisted. The emergency brake cable on the passenger side is a little more difficult. The lever arm is here on the top and it's easiest to put the cable in from the other side. First thing I need to do is get the hook through the hole in the lever arm. It's helpful if you have someone pry the lever forward to give you a little more slack on the cable. And then I can pull the spring back to get the casing seated. And you just need to make sure that the cable seats the whole way and the tangs lock. We're going to install the rotor and caliper on the passenger side. Your stock JL brake hose and original banjo bolt will work with the Ultima Dana 60 JL rear calipers. You can also use aftermarket stainless steel braided hoses. The other part that you're going to need to make the emergency brake cables work properly is a four inch extension on the handle that's under the center console. You'll need a four inch piece of M6 by one all thread, two M6 by one nuts, and an M6 by one coupler. You'll use this to make the piece of all thread on the handle longer so that it'll still engage the brake cables. Our lift kit came with sway bar end link extensions. Now I'm gonna put them down through so we can mount. There's an Allen in the end of this, so you need to hold the Allen and tighten the nut. And we can move to the other side. And we'll tighten the upper sway bar and link bolt when we get the weight on the suspension. Some final connections we need to make are the electric locker and the vent tube for the axle. Now we just need to get the weight on the suspension so we can torque all of the bolts. I hope this video has helped explain the installation of the Ultima Dana 60 JL axles. We hope to see your Jeep on the trail real soon. Remember to follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Spicer Parts. Under no circumstances should individuals attempt to perform any repair or maintenance procedure for which they have not been properly trained or lack proper tools and equipment for the repair, including but not limited to safety glasses, boots, clothing, etc. Always wear the proper safety glasses that meet the OSHA requirements when performing maintenance or service. Failure to wear safety glasses can result in personal injury and or partial or complete vision loss. Always be careful when working with any products that have sharp edges. Always be sure to follow proper torque specifications carefully. Failure to do so may lead to premature component failure or damage to the vehicle components. Please be responsible and dispose of automotive fluids properly. Check with your local auto parts store for the proper recycling requirements and locations in your area. Considerations. The Ultimate Dana 60 axles are for all Jeep Wrangler JL model years. Dana recommends using a professional lift when installing axles. All fasteners should be torqued to the manufacturer's specifications once the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension or on the ground. 
A lift kit must be installed prior to installing the Ultimate Dana 60 axles. New drive shafts are required for installation. Wheels must be upgraded to an 8 on 6.5 inch bolt pattern. For more information on installation and components, refer to SHAIS212 in the library at www.spicerparts.com library.